Well, the Canadian Federation of Students is the is is a body that represents students all across the country. We have over six hundred students, six hundred thousand students represented federally, uh, and on a provincial level, we have the Canadian Federation of Students, Newfoundland and Labrador, and we represent about twenty eight thousand students here in this province. And I, we actually represent every student that attends a public post secondary education institution uh, within the province because we only have. Uh, the public college and the public university. They have multiple campuses of those, but those are the two major institutions, both of which have all the student unions members of the Canadian Federation of Students. Uh, the Canadian Federation of Students in this role, uh, with in terms of these rallies, uh, it was more of a, it was a support role to the College of the North Atlantic and ensuring that other student unions were becoming active and engaged in, in showing solidarity with the College of the North Atlantic. I know in my role as campaigns coordinator, I spent a fair amount of time Make, uh, working with each of the uh, campuses, the 15 communities that were uh, participating, that they had all the resources that they need uh, in terms of uh, media contacts or uh, actual physical placards or signs or any assistance with any sort of media advisories or speeches or anything like that. By the College of North Atlantic students themselves, they took a very strong lead on this and we were just happy to be able to be there to support them because we're, we're all in this together through the Canadian Federation of Students and we're all fighting for the same thing together. Uh, so we're the Adventure Tourism Program at the College of the North Atlantic, you know, most of us here in our second year, and uh, we are very affected by these cuts. Not only did we lose uh, our industry, which is a billion dollar industry right now, projected to be 1.6 in 2020, but we also lost any hope for our future essentially. I mean, where are we going to go get jobs? Most of the people in this province who get jobs through the tourism industry, it's government funded. How are we going to go and promote our province with all of our beautiful natural resources, all this amazing beautiful landscape to see if we don't have anybody supporting us to do it? They cut those Newfoundland commercials that are on TV, beautiful, they cut those. It's just little things that are affecting the whole province as a whole. And it's trickling down the system and it's affecting everyone. We're losing good teachers, teachers here at the college who are professional, trained, they're excellent in their skill, they have a passion for teaching and a passion for their students, and those teachers are now jobless. It's just a shame. <laughs> I, I guess too, it's kind of a shame to see that uh, future students won't have the opportunity to join our program. Uh, I've mentioned it already a few times that we do have very high enrollment for next year, or at least we did until the program got cut. We are looking at at least 15, maybe more students for next year. And that would have been excellent to get some more trained professionals going through our program. So it's, uh, it's kind of tough to see that people who would like to enjoy this program in the future are not even going to get their true chance. 
and uh, well, I'm an international student from uh, from France, and I think that international students, international students like me are uh, our biggest set for for the province, and um, I just don't understand the the fact that the, the government is. Uh, Giving priorities to projects like Muscat Falls and uh, Ibrun or stuff like that, and cut uh, like programs that can actually benefit the, the, the province in the long run. Here at Grenfell, it's, it wouldn't be fair to say that we're not affected by the cuts at all. I mean, first of all, uh, Grenfell has two and two agreements with uh, several programs with College of the North Atlantic. So you can do two programs at College of the North Atlantic, and then you can do two more, uh, two years, sorry, there, and then you can do two more years here at Grenfell and have both your degree, uh, your diploma and degree. Um, well, I should say you used to be able to do that because some of those programs don't exist anymore. Um, there was partnerships that we had, uh, research partnerships, lab partnerships, we had students from there coming up here and we have students from here going down there. Um, another important thing to mention is that right now Memorial University is under review, a uh, full review. Well, Memorial University, uh, our heads are on the chopping block next. Uh, government pretty much did everything but say that we were going to face cuts next year. Uh, Memorial University is under review right now. Um, I know for a fact that here at Grenfell, uh, some positions have, uh, uh, well, off-campus housing has already been cut without uh, any cons consultation towards the, to the GS GCSU. Uh, I'm an adventure tourism student, okay. adventure tourism and outdoor recreation. I am graduating this uh, semester actually, and I just want to say it's uh, kind of disappointing to see this program get cut. You know, we have a billion dollar tourism industry that actually just went underneath some uh, major cutbacks itself. And so there's companies out there now that more than ever need trained professionals in order to work these positions. And by cutting our program out, we're getting rid of all the trained professionals left to work this uh, left to work this industry. And unfortunately for that, that's going to potentially put a lot of uh, companies at a higher risk of uh, financial issues. And I guess another big thing too, this year coming, we've actually had the second highest enrollment rate out of uh, all the natural resources programs. We had at least 15 people already registered, maybe upwards of 20. The rumors are still floating around. And unfortunately now, all those people cannot join our program. Uh, so that's a lot of trained professionals that we are losing, and it's very unfortunate. Sad to see. Privatization of education is just a really bad idea. I mean, right now, uh, students can afford to go and uh, take ABE. Like, it's not completely out of the, the realm of afford affordability. Um, if it was privatized at an institution like such as Academy Canada, I mean, most students would find that uh, unaffordable. And as well, uh, some of these privatized uh, institutions aren't even accredited across Canada. Uh, I think that when we're looking at a public institution, they have an accountability to the people of the province. So uh, we're able to, through our uh, democratic processes, actually say to government what it is that we need and want in educational services in our province. And we're able to offer those through public institutions. If we start cutting those down bit by bit and handing it off to private institutions, then who are they accountable to? They're accountable to the CEOs and board of directors that are running those organizations. In the 1990s, we saw when College of North Atlantic was a private institution, uh, it, they actually locked their doors because they went bankrupt. And we had students who had been in the, in the college system for two to three years, and they had taken a significant amount of debt to, to get to that point, and it was only three or four weeks left before exams. But because it was at a private institution, uh, it wasn't, they weren't able to complete their programs because they, the, the, the people that were running the institution at the time were only accountable. They weren't accountable to the people that were actually attending. So 
uh, they just shut the doors because they were no longer making money, and that was it. And actually, that's when it became a public institution, it was in the 90s. Uh, they've also chained the doors to the library shut. I think last night on the news, they had representation of there was a bunch of students in the library with no librarians, but in all actual fact, the library is locked down. There's no entrance. <laughs> Everything went really well. I'm really happy with everybody who showed up today. I'm uh, really thankful to GCSU, also to the community, and also to the CNA students and staff that showed up today. Um, without you guys, this would not have been possible. I know that I am just one person speaking, but with everybody who showed up today, I, I'm really sure uh, that we did send that message to the government that education is a right and that it should be adequately funded. The, the strong public post-secondary uh, education sector here in Newfoundland has really been the saving grace of the province over the past years. We've seen the continuation of the long-standing tuition freeze, an 1100% increase in students from Nova Scotia coming every year. Um, we graduate fewer and fewer programs from our high school classes, but enrollment in Memorial continues to uh, increase. So it's one of the few things that is actually bringing people to the province. It's one of the few things that are keeping people in the province. Investment in uh, education is simply that. It's an investment. It's not an expense line. Uh, every dollar that is invested into the College of the North Atlantic can yield as much as $11.50 uh, in return. Spin-off benefits, economic benefits, um, employment. After years of building a system of post-secondary education that became the envy of students across the country, our government just stripped 15 million dollars from CNA's operating budget. And the effects are already being felt on many campuses. Come September, campuses in Bayburg, Carbonier, Bonavista, and all the other rural areas will no doubt feel empty and desolate after the slashing of nearly 30 academic programs across the province and the removal of upwards of 900 AVE students from our campuses. And there's still more to come. With the privatization of the College of North Atlantic's program, the Adult Basic Education program, uh, with that, the, there's, we're, students are really concerned that there's, that there's not a whole lot of planning actually done with that decision. We don't know where students are actually going to end up, and neither does government, because they don't have the tendering process put out yet. So uh, it, does, it seems like everyone's sort of throwing around these hypotheticals as to where students may actually be in the fall, but we don't know. And the question comes the up then, why could the things that we wanted to address be done in a public setting? Why, what was the rationale for going to a, a private institution rather than keeping it within a public institution where we're accountable to the province and when we have control over what it is we would like to see offered and what the people of the province need. Newfoundland has one of the largest literacy rates all across Canada, if the largest, and we cut ABE. It's like the government trying to farm their sheep. We've basically said that we're going to sell our education to the lowest bidder, and I don't think that that's acceptable. Uh, private models have to be for profit, or else they won't be private. They'll be completely funded publicly. So a private model, which is for a public, I question if they're going to open in remote communities, if they will uh, remain open in Labrador, if we'll remain that. I mean, the College of the North Atlanta campus in St. Anthony right now, I believe it has about 60 people which attend it. That's uh, nowhere close to what you need to actually turn a profit from a, from an education model. So there's couple things that I have to give you, either the quality uh, deteriorates or the cost increases. Uh, so I mean we've had a government assure us that the cost of the student will not increase. I question how that means that we will save any money. Um, I, the, the cuts don't make sense to me. I think that it's uh, public education should be for the public good and I mean adult basic education is, is where it all starts. Personally I think uh, adult bas basic education is one of the most important aspects of post-secondary education. I mean, those are the stepping stones to get yourself through university. And these people, they're a very vulnerable, vulnerable group of people uh, generally. And to attack them, it just seems uh, morally uh, wrong. 
Uh, these are people that, uh, and I can speak as one of them, uh, that the public school system has failed. They've slipped through the cracks of the public uh, school system. So I think we're just, it's just we're making it even even worse on them. We will Last day of students marching to this will. building. It was February 7th, 2007, for the National Day of Action. Students stood in solidarity to force the government to take action on the growing student debt crisis. As a direct result of this action, we saw the reinstatement of the Upfront Needs-Based Grants Program, showing that when students are united, we will get results. Woo! announced that the first of what would become more than a decade of tuition fee freezes. He, pro he was approached by reporters and asked, Mr. Tobin, Mr. Tobin, why did you choose to freeze the fees? He could have responded by saying something like, I value the youth of this province, or my government understands that this is an investment in our future. But he didn't do that. Instead, he looked into the cameras and said, the students made it impossible for me to not freeze tuition fees. Yeah! Um, I'm in AT. These cuts direct, well, maybe not me directly, but anyone else who has any interest for the future to do this program. Um, the tourism industry should be booming in Newfoundland, especially Western Newfoundland, with all the features that we have here. And to cut a program such as this, just to save a couple dollars somewhere to conniving go government, it's not that can't do. Hi, I'm uh, Christopher Mitchell Moore. I'm the MHA for the Straits White Bay North, and uh, certainly these cutbacks are uh, an attack on education. Education is a right, and uh, you know what I see uh, in, in my region, especially, is that uh, if you take away programming like adult basic education, the ABE program, that's really the, the foundation. And if you take that away from the people who are the most vulnerable, who really made that step to look at getting into the workplace, it's going to trickle down and that whole house of cards is going to fall. And, and if you allow the, the chipping to happen at ABE, then it's going to have impacts on other programs. And we've seen that. In my district of the Straits White Bay North, over 40% of the population uh, do not have a high school certificate, so it's, it's quite large. And, uh, you know, people, people have to speak out. Speak out. Um, when you're seeing things being attacked, like our, our public education system, to see programming like the electronics and programming being cut here at the Cornerbrook, it's one of the labor market 2020 programs. You know, the, the phone companies are in demand. They're asking for these types of recruits. So there's a real mismatch as to what's being cut. You know, our tourism industry, we were looking at a billion dollar industry by 2020, Vision 2020 is saying, we want it to be 1.6 uh, billion. But how are we gonna get there? We're cutting adventure tours, and we're cutting that experiential piece that we wanna do. These are types of things that we really need to look at. You know, people do need to push back. I commend the movement as to what's happening with students here. And, uh, and we need to move forward. We really need to ask government to go back to the drawing board here and take a second look at our post-secondary institutions. Thank you. All right, so we're the environmental technology program for second years, and uh, our program has been cut. It's very important to have this program as industry is moving in, and uh, the need to look at air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution. Um, our course, that's what we do. We hands-on in uh, environmental assessments and environmental impact. We also monitor basically are these programs feasible for the location that we're going into. They're going into a environment where we have a very negative impact, obviously you can't put it there. And we can give some directions how they can change their uh, what they're doing, make it better for the environment, but still be feasible for them to make money and for the economy as well. And with all the oil booming, or the oil industry is booming around Newfoundland, it's, a, it's like bound to happen that there's going to be an oil spill here. We need people like us to be there to protect the environment and stop oil companies from getting away with big spills and not having to clean up all their stuff. Thunderdale even said on TV, you know, whenever you do a project, you have environmental impacts. You have to prepare for that. That's what we do. So how can you justify cutting a program that you clearly need in a growing um, industrial province? Like, we have 
stuff like uh, Muskrat Falls, Long Harbor, um, Little Arm. Those are all sites that we can potentially get jobs on. And then they say they cut it because you have low enrollment. Well, you have low enrollment because they don't advertise. Every single one of us had to go look for this program. So how can you justify that? There's plenty of jobs with it everywhere. So it's not about the workforce. I thought uh, speaking to Cornerbrook first that it was uh, incredibly successful. I saw a great turnout on a, on a cold, snowy day, and I saw a lot of passionate people who really thought that uh, investment in post-secondary education should, should be a major priority of the provincial government. Uh, there was people there who were facing program cuts. Uh, there were students there showing support to their fellow students. There was members of the community who. Uh, who weren't directly affected by the cuts uh, at all? Uh, I think that the response that we've had across the province was a, a very good one. I know I attended the rally here in Corner Brook, and we had a response of anywhere between two and 300 people, and that was an incredible response. It was a very enthusiastic crowd. I, I guess the important thing to take away from this is that students are really passionate about all uh, about post-secondary education in this province and in this country, and especially with reference to what's going on right now is where we're coming from. Uh, and students will be continuing. It's not just going to be, uh, we work, we'll be continuing our efforts. It's not just going to be this one-time rally. Uh, in fact, we already met with an MHA earlier today to talk about how the rally went yesterday and uh, the way that had trying to get some more information on what's actually going on. So uh, we're, we're going to be continuing uh, getting those questions answered and making sure that the government will reverse its cuts and that we will see a more affordable and high quality post-secondary education institution, uh, both institutions within this province.